Azure subscription is one service or resource which everyone who works on Azure is using. I mean, technically, you cannot create any other Azure resource before you have an active Azure subscription. But do you think it's just this Azure subscription is for or is there more to be understood on this less talked Azure service? Azure subscription, Azure management group and a lot more coming up in this episode 10 of this Azure fundamental series. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's episode, we are going to understand how to describe subscription and this is our section 2.1.5 and then moving ahead, we will describe the management groups and this will be our section 2.1.6 and finally, we will cover section 2.1.7, which is to describe the hierarchy of resource groups, subscription and management groups. All these subsections are under the major section called section 2, which is to describe the Azure architecture and Azure services. And please note friends, this is very important from the exam perspective as it alone commands 35 to 40 percent of the total exam questions. Please note that in previous parts, we have already covered Azure region, regional pairs and sovereign region. We have also understood the concept of Azure availability zones, Azure data centers and Azure resources and resource groups. So I highly recommend you to watch all the previous parts to understand all the core components of Microsoft Azure. The links to all the previous parts are available in the description box. Please subscribe to the channel as more and more interesting topic on Microsoft Azure are coming up. So let's first understand Azure subscription and this is our section 2.1.5. Well, friends, to begin with, you can visualize an Azure subscription like a resource group in the sense that it's a logical container that associates the resource group and their respective resources. In case you want to understand more on resource group, please check out the previous part, part nine of this fundamental series. And friends, to be honest, the similarity between Azure subscription and the resource group ends here. The real importance of Azure subscription comes from the fact that the billing is linked to the Azure subscription. So Azure generates the billing or invoices of all your Azure resources on subscription level. Now you can have multiple subscription in one Azure account, each with its own billing. And of course, we will understand a lot about Azure subscription and the hierarchy of resource group, subscription and management group in just a little while. Please do not overthink about management group everything will make sense in the upcoming slides. Now, do you remember our previous example in the episode nine, where we created a website called the techblackboard.com? Now friends, as I explained earlier, we need a lot of resources to create a website. We need storage. We also need some virtual machines, database, and possibly lot more resources. Now friends, just for a second, please think about on what level Microsoft tracks all these resources for billing. Is it on the resource level? The answer is no. Is it on the resource group level? The answer is again a no. So what is the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is on subscription level. Microsoft tracks all the billing on subscription level. So as I mentioned, one big important aspect of Azure subscription is billing. And friends, all the concepts will get more clear to you as we move in this video. Now, let me tell you some facts about Azure subscription to help you better understand them. The first one is that an Azure subscription is mandatory when you are using Azure resources. This means that you cannot move forward in Azure to create any resource unless you first have created a valid subscription. And friends, in case you have ever tried creating any resource without having an active subscription, you will get error messages like this. In fact, you cannot even create an Azure Cloud Shell without a valid subscription. And for the learning purpose, in case you are creating a new Azure account, please try to create Azure Cloud Shell without creating any subscription. And I'm sure you will get this error message that you need an Azure subscription to use Azure Cloud Shell. All these factors points to the importance of Azure subscription. 
To cut the long story short, I can say that in Azure, your journey begins with creating an active Azure subscription in your Azure account. Let's move ahead with the second fact. An Azure subscription is a manageable Azure resource. This means that like any other Azure resource, subscriptions are also manageable. Thirdly, we have an Azure subscription authenticates and authorizes you to use Azure resources. Coming to the fourth fact, Azure subscription is linked to an Azure account, which in turn is an identity in Azure Active Directory. As I told you about subscription and billing, Azure subscription is an agreement between your organization and Microsoft to use the Azure resources for which charges are either paid on per license basis or a cloud based resource consumption basis. And lastly, my friends, you have to understand that in Azure, when you create an Azure account, you can have multiple subscription inside an Azure account. But please understand one subscription, one active subscription is mandatory before you create any resource in Microsoft Azure. Now let's move ahead and understand another very important concept called Azure subscription boundaries. Here we have two of them. The first one is the billing boundary. And this subscription boundary type defines the billing requirement for using the resources. And as I just mentioned, you can create different subscription for different billing requirements and Azure will send a separate billing for each subscription. Moving ahead, the second one is access control boundary. And friends, you can create an access control boundary at the subscription level by applying different access management policies to the different subscription to reflect a completely different organizational structure. Now let's move ahead and talk about what could be the best level on which you can create Azure subscription. And here, let me give you an example. Suppose you are a big IT firm and you have several departments like IT, HR or finance and you are using Azure Cloud for all your solutions. Now friends, as it happens in many big IT firms or any other big companies, you use lot of in-house softwares. For example, in our case, IT teams are using certain set of softwares. Then we have payroll management systems, which are generally used by the HR department and then other financial services, which are used by the financial department. Now to keep the accounting books clear, you want to know which department is spending how much on these cloud solutions. So how can you control the cost on each department level? Friends, please pay attention. It's a very important cloud concept. So as I just asked you, how can you control the cost on each department level? Well, this is exactly where subscription comes to help. Azure generates separate billing reports and invoices for each subscription so that you can organize and manage costs. So a single Azure account can have multiple subscription, but there must be at least at least one subscription in your Azure account. As I just mentioned, billing is first generated at the subscription level and then it gets aggregated at account level. So please understand this concept very carefully. Billing is first generated at subscription level and then it is aggregated at account level. So friends, let's apply this concept in our example. We have three subscription here. We have IT subscription, then we have finance subscription and then we have HR subscription. So billing from Microsoft will first be generated on these independent subscription level and then it will be aggregated at the Azure account level. So I hope now you have understood how the actual billing works in Microsoft Azure. But creating subscription on the department level is just one example. There can be other level where you can create subscription. For example, you can create subscription on the environment level as well. Now, let's say that you have a test environment. You also have a development environment. And the third one you have is production environment. Now you can create subscription on these environment level as well in your company. So here friends, I gave you two examples based on which you can create your Azure subscription. The first one was organizational structure level and the other one was environment level. And these are just two examples to help you understand the concept on what level you can create Azure subscription. But of course, you can create Azure subscription on any level that best suits your business requirements. 
and finally let's understand a very important concept azure management groups which are the highest level of hierarchy and this is our section 2.1.6 okay so now friends let's suppose that you have many azure subscription azure resource group and of course a lot of azure resources now things can really become out of control as you or your company grow in size at this point you might need a way to efficiently manage all these different elements and to make the things even more complex you also have to manage access policies and compliance for all these resources and different components so is there any efficient way to manage all these resources so what is the solution well let me do some magic here here it goes well there is of course no magic to properly manage all these scattered resources and to give more structure we need azure management groups so friends azure management groups provides a level of scope above the azure subscription in this diagram i have presented the entire hierarchy in microsoft azure let me explain more in this diagram you can see that we have these blue boxes and these blue boxes are azure management groups then we have these boxes with this key symbol which are azure subscription these yellow boxes represents azure resource group and then finally at the lowest level we have azure resources let me explain little bit more as i just said that azure management groups provide a level of scope above the azure subscription so basically you can organize subscriptions into containers called management groups and apply the governance condition to these management groups now here in this image you can see that azure management groups are at the top of this complete hierarchy you can create top level management group and then everything else comes inside these management groups but friends here i want to bring up a point that many people get confused about please pay full attention there will be lot of questions in az900 around these concepts so friends in this diagram you can see that on top level i have shown these management group but here the most important concept related to management group is that though we have management groups but they are not mandatory once again i'm repeating friends you can create management groups but they are not mandatory to be there you can manage all your resources even if you do not have any management group and you will see these kind of images in lot of documentation which depicts the hierarchy of management groups subscription resource group and resources and by seeing these kind of hierarchy images please do not assume that everything is mandatory to be created as i said that management groups are optional so even if you do not have management groups you can still be very well working with microsoft azure so basically management groups are there to bring more structure in resource management as well as bring better management in access policies and compliance and please note this is our section 2.1.7 and now i want to show you facts on azure management groups very important facts please understand them very carefully firstly all the subscription within a management group automatically inherit the condition applied to the management group the same way the resource group inherits the settings from the subscription and the resources inherit the settings from the resource groups Secondly management groups gives you a enterprise grade management at a large scale no matter what type of subscription you might have and friends one more important point here that unlike resource group management groups can be nested thirdly i want to remind you once again that azure management groups are optional so i'm sure that these facts will really help you understand what is the exact relevance of microsoft management groups So that was all for today. We have covered a lot of ground today. So let's summarize. We started with understanding Azure subscription, what are they, why they are needed, and then we covered some facts about them. We then moved ahead to describe Azure management groups, and then finally I explained the hierarchy of resource groups, subscription and management groups. And hopefully this makes it clear how all these components come together to provide you with tools that you would need throughout your azure journey to efficiently manage azure resources subscriptions 
management groups, access, policies, compliance and a lot more. And here I want to give you a quick reminder that we are going to soon launch an updated series of questions and answers on AZ900. So friends, if you like our efforts, please help us grow. Do remember to like and share this video. It will help a lot of new Azure Cloud learners. And in case you are new here today, please subscribe to the channel and I promise to help you build a great cloud career. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.